Thank you for the question, PJ. Uh, everyone involved in ALS research strives for finding cures for the disease, which would be the ideal outcome. Uh, given that there are no effective treatments yet, uh, we from the very beginning have focused on trying to find effective treatments for the disease. Um, one can never predict if you'll find a cure, uh, but if you have better treatments, that may be, that would be helpful. If you look at a disease like Parkinson's disease, uh, we still do not have a cure for it. However, there are effective treatments that have allowed patients to lead a longer and higher quality life. Uh, with respect to your second question, yes, it is possible to get a test to know if someone carries a gene that is associated with ALS. Uh, this is a question that is uh, best discussed with your uh, physician and a genetic counselor. I will point out that uh, around 10% of ALS cases uh, are known to be associated with genetic mutations, while 90% are considered sporadic, which means there is no known underlying cause for the disease. Thank you for the question. It is important to address both symptoms and the underlying disease. So one of the challenges with addressing only symptoms in a disease like ALS is that it is caused by a progressive and irreversible loss of motor neurons. And in this scenario, it becomes important to try and slow the progression or stop the progression of the disease so that any effort to address the symptoms is uh, not an uphill struggle. And it is for this reason that we have, uh, from the very beginning, focused on finding effective treatments for the disease. In pursuit of this goal, we have uh, made it our mission to harness the power of collaboration to accelerate the process. Um, we feel that our approach is working. Uh, today, we have been able to identify over a dozen novel therapeutic approaches, four of which have uh, already gone into clinical trials. So thank you for the question, Barney, which puts a spotlight on a really important challenge we continue to face. The challenge is that uh, the earliest symptoms of ALS, like muscle tremors or muscle stiffness, overlap with other disorders. And so the clinician has to exclude other possibilities to arrive at a diagnosis of ALS. Now, if we had a specific biomarker to help diagnose the disease, that would be very helpful. But overall, the challenge we have is that we lack biomarkers to diagnose, track the disease progression, or to evaluate effect of a specific treatment. And so it is really for this reason that we have focused on, in a, on a comprehensive approach to try and find the first biomarkers for ALS. And our approach includes efforts like a recent funding call where we for the first time have asked for experts in academia and industry to work together to find effect biomarkers for the disease. We are also working to expand access to precious and critically needed resources like human biospecimens and data sets that are important to carry out this work. Uh, as you know, all model systems uh, contribute in different ways to finding better targets. If one had to pick one, a, a reasonable argu argument can be made that um, access to as much uh, human-based data like genomics, proteomics, or single nuclear profiling would be a game changer. Because this would allow us in many fold to understand what happens in humans, and then we can validate the efficacy and safety of these targets in cellular and animal model systems. And so with this in mind, uh, we have made a concerted effort to lower barriers to access to these precious human biosamples and data sets to what we call a bio biosample and genomics core. And we're really proud that this uh, core has helped over 300 ALS projects worldwide already. And encouraged by this, we continue to expand this effort. So, thanks, Larry. Uh, your, your physician and uh, the, the clinics are best placed to uh, respond to your healthcare related um, uh, query. Uh, with respect to your question about the ability to regain muscle strength after atrophy, experts are of the opinion that in ALS, uh, this is a result of either loss of function of motor neurons or death of motor neurons. And so it is conceivable that if we have treatments that help preserve the function of motor neurons or their loss, that may help with muscle strength. But any return of function, experts feel, would depend on either rescuing the neurons that are sick but not yet dead, or 
encouraging the neurons that are left to compensate for the functions of neurons that have been lost already. And we may glean information along these lines from some of the clinical trials that are ongoing.